Hey, Mark here. I wanted to share a pretty unique opportunity and it's very timely. So I wanted to uh, do an update from another video that we had uh, in our channel. So I'll go ahead and replace this video. And it's all about the Virgin Voyages Summer Pass. It's exciting because they've now extended this opportunity to a second of their three ships. Originally, this was on the Scarlet Lady. It's going to give you an opportunity to spend an entire month, June, July, August, or September uh, on the Scarlet Lady in Europe. And it included a lot. They've now extended this to the Resilient Lady. And Monica and myself, we have the unique perspective of having been on all three ships now. And in fact, we've actually worked remotely from all three ships. We have a really good feeling for everything from how comfortable the rooms are, to what the food is like, to what the internet is, which I know is a mission critical for those of us who work remotely, what the entertainment light is like and what the experience is overall. I do wanna let you know, as you'll see here on the screen, uh, that this opportunity is starting at about $10,000 for an entire month for two people. So that's a great deal when you consider it includes everything all inclusive, right? It's your room, it's your, it's your entertainment, and it's actually your Wi-Fi and even your laundry. So look here what it covers. You're not getting one of the small inside rooms. You're actually getting a sea terrace. So you will have a room with a balcony. You're getting upgraded to the premium Wi-Fi. And look, I can speak firsthand. We were just on the Valiant Lady in the Caribbean during the month of March. Uh, and the Wi-Fi was fantastic uh, overall. The Starlink uh, and recently just had an announcement that they're going to have the fastest internet at sea anywhere. Uh, I think it's already pretty much up there as it is, uh, but I'm assuming by the summer, this new program will probably be in play. I think you'll have no problem uh, working from the ship without a question. The only thing I can ever tell you is download speeds are great. Upload is always a little bit slower when you use the Starlink and satellite type systems, but still, it's definitely workable. Now, one thing that's really nice is they're going to have a laundry service available too. Virgin Voyages has always been very generous, giving you a really large laundry bag in your room, as opposed to a lot of cruise lines we've been on where they give you a tiny little paper bag and somehow you got to stuff as much as you can into it before it rips. No problem at all, dumping all of our laundry in uh, and getting it back. In addition, you get some really nice perks. You're going to have early access to booking, which I think is really important because it's probably going to be pretty busy this summer on the ships. Uh, and the way it works on Virgin Voyages is you can pre-book your dinner reservations ahead of time. You certainly can show up and wait, uh, but I've always liked having bookings in the different restaurants. And they have some really great restaurants overall. Some of our favorites were Pink Agave, which is the Mexican restaurant, The Wake, which is uh, seafood and steaks. You've got Test Kitchen, which is like an experimental uh, dinner. It's a lot of fun. It's a, definitely a journey. You have Goombay which is a Korean barbecue uh, dinner. And you also have Extra Virgin, which is their Italian restaurant. In addition, they've got amazing pizza. They've got gelato. Uh, they have a food hall rather than the typical uh, buffet. So I don't think you're going to burn out at all on the variety of different food that's available. All the menus are fairly deep, meaning you can go back to the same restaurant multiple times. When we were on the Resilient Lady, we did a sailing from Singapore all the way down to Australia. I think it was about 18 days. So we repeated restaurants three or four times. Uh, and we really never got tired uh, of anything. And the food hall has about seven or eight different choices as well. So that's not going to be a problem. In addition, you can see you're going to get access to Richard's rooftop. If you haven't sailed on Virgin Voyages before, this has always been reserved for just sweet guests, which we had the opportunity to be uh, one of the sweet guests on the Valiant Lady. It's Rockstar Cabins. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, Richard's rooftop, it has a happy hour every night. So you get some free drinks on a limited menu. Uh, you get some private space so it doesn't get overcrowded. And it's, it's a lot calmer of an experience. So you're going to be working and working remotely. I would have no problem grabbing my laptop uh, or my phone or coming up to the rooftop, finding a space uh, and being able to do a little bit of work or watching some videos or whatever you need to do. A little bit different at the main pool. I think this is a great opportunity. You get a $10 a day credit. They've got some really great specialty coffees. That's good for about two really nice specialty coffees and some additional uh, perks as well. This is a really great package. You're not quite getting sweet status but you're getting some of the perks and some of the benefits for being in a suite at a pretty incredible deal. Think about it, it's $5,000 per person for an entire month. Now, the next decision you're gonna have to make is if you're interested, you need to express interest because I think it's gone over very well with the Scarlet Lady, which is why they've extended it now to the Resilient Lady. That was my favorite ship of the three, by the way. It is the newest. Uh, the Scarlet Lady was the original, but they're all pretty much identical. Uh, you're not gonna have any dramatic differences in the experiences. I think they just made a few improvements on the Resilient Lady that I appreciated. But again, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference between uh, the two different shifts. So I would go for the one that has the best itinerary. 
And if you go to the link, and I'll put down in the notes below a link to this page on Virgin Voyages, I'm also going to put a link down below to a very thorough article that we did on pros and cons of taking uh, a cruise on Virgin Voyages. You're going to want to see that because we loved it. But there's some things you need to be aware of going into uh, this cruise ship. They do some things differently. It may not be for everybody. If it's for you, you're going to love it. But I think that article is going to be great to reference. You can hear what we loved, what we didn't, and anything in between. But look at it this way. Scarlet Lady, basically what you're going to do over the course of June and July, August, and September, you can choose the month you want to go on, is you're going to basically repeat two itineraries. And you can see it's going to be the French Days and Ibiza Nights. You'll do that twice, and you'll do the Irresistible Med twice. And it's nice because it's every other. And it's the same each month that you can see, and you'll have multiple ports. I'll show you some of the details on that in the moment. Resilient Lady is a little bit different. It's a bit more repetitive because you're going to do the Greek Island Glow three times, and then this really incredible Adriatic Sea and Greek Gems. This is a great itinerary. I almost wish they were repeating this one twice for you. Uh, but still, the nice thing about repeating ports and repeating places is we're talking about working remotely a little bit. When you start to repeat, you don't feel so compelled to do everything in a given day. You might just stay on the ship if you've already done a certain port a couple times. Or you may do something different. Or maybe just go out and you walk, you take a hike, you get some nature, and then you come back on the ship. So I kind of like this when you're compelled to try to cram everything in a given week. Let me show you the itineraries. So on Scarlet Lady, uh, you're going to be do the, doing this one twice. You'll start in Barcelona. So you do need to think, I need to get myself to Barcelona. That is one extra cost. Uh, but you've got Marseille, you've got Caen, Palma de Mallorca, Ibiza. And this is an overnight, which is really cool in Ibiza. And then you'll be back on Barcelona, but you're lucky. You're not getting off the ship. That's just your first week. Now you're going to move on to the second week. And in the second week, you'll be in Barcelona, which is great, of course. You'll go to Toulon. You'll go to Marina di Carrera. Uh, you'll be in Rome, which is amazing. You'll have a nice sea day, which is, which is great. And then you'll repeat uh, Ibiza. So you'll be doing Ibiza several times here, but that's what I mentioned. Maybe you start to get to know it a little bit. You do something you really like. You don't feel stressed and pressured to do too much. And you get into Ibiza at seven o'clock at night, by the way. So it's really just a nighttime and then a little bit the next day. It becomes like a day and a half of a really relaxing a sea day and a half, which you're going to love. And you're back in Barcelona. And you'll just repeat those two weeks uh, for the next two weeks. If you added up what this would cost, typically, I'm going to say normally you're looking at probably about fourteen dollars to $15,000. Remember, you're getting this for as low as $10,000, but you're also getting the additional perks. One week in Rockstar, you can see up above, is about $5,000, right? Times that by four, that's $20,000. You're not getting all the Rockstar status, but you're getting a lot of the nice perks. Uh, just really a different cabin overall, for pretty significant savings. All right, so if you choose the newer ship, the Resilient Lady, you're going to repeat this itinerary three times. And you'll start in Athens. That's where you'll be starting and ending. You'll do Santorini, Rhodes, Bodrum, Mykonos, and then back to Athens. You'll do that one three times, but you'll also add one of the four weeks will be this itinerary. And this one I think is a really nice one. So you'll on week three, you'll have a sea day and then you'll be in Dubrovnik, you'll be in Split, you'll be in Kotor, and you'll be in Corfu. Uh, and then you'll have another sea, sea day before you're back in Athens. These are some really nice stops. Kotor is amazing. Dubrovnik is incredible. Split has got all kinds of things to offer, excursions and history and great food. So I think you're going to love this itinerary as well. And so it really comes down to which ship and which itinerary speaks to you the most. So once you decide that, I would go ahead and immediately go to the page and say that you're interested. You're not obligating yourself to anything. You're going to get some more information. In addition, if you have a travel agent, you can also book this directly through your travel agent. We work with a cruise-only travel agent, uh, and we get some additional perks. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in. You can always leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to uh, share with you their contact information. I don't like to give that out generally unless somebody's really interested uh, because they will typically offer you some additional onboard credit. That onboard credit can be used for drinks on board uh, because the way that Virgin Voyages works is a bar tab and you go ahead and you uh, set up a bar tab and then you can use that bar tab for drinks if that's something that you want to do. If you want to have alcoholic beverages, which are not included except when you're at Richard's rooftop during the happy hour. That's a really great idea for that one hour. Get your drink on, right, before you go to dinner. And the nice thing, too, that we found is the alcohol, it's reasonable. It's not typically like we're in Austin, Texas, where we live. And the prices here for, for wine, for uh, cocktails, are is much, much higher uh, than we experience on the ship. But anyway, if you were a digital nomad, if you've ever thought about you know, doing a cruise like this, staying on board for a month, maybe only having to unpack once, I think this is a really neat opportunity in a, a trend-setting cruise line with some really neat ships. And I think you'd have 
uh, a great time if it appeals to you. But definitely read the article, the pros and cons. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Like I mentioned, Monica and myself, we've been on all three ships, so we can give you what we thought about each one and the experience if you have any questions in particular. All right, and if you do go ahead and book also, let me know down below. I'll be really curious to uh, hear about your experiences. Take care, everybody.